Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Nut Closer Show. As always, Scott Carson here today. Uh, it is Monday here in the office. Hope everybody's had a great weekend. Obviously, uh, I'm wearing a jersey here today because I lost a bet. Uh, actually, uh, Red Sox wrapped up the World Series last night by beating the LA Dodgers four games to one. Um, I lost a bet <laughs> when the Red Sox beat the Astros. I promised my buddy Tom Hazard, who's a huge Red Sox fan, that, okay, if the Astros won, he would have worn a jersey. Red Sox won, since I'm wearing a jersey. They wrapped it up. It came in. It was delivered on Friday. So it's the first opportunity. I really had an opportunity to wear it here to prove uh, that I'm a man of my word. But anyway, <laughs> um, no offense to any Dodgers fans out there, but, hey, uh, go Red Sox, four championships in 15 years. That's phenomenal, especially after such a hiatus from doing anything. So, but anyway, uh, today's topic is all about really kind of finishing strong. And it kind of comes in line with a little bit of the World Series in baseball. Most of you know that I'm a big baseball fan, a big football fan, not really a big NBA fan. I mean, I, I watch it, wait till the playoffs come, but I don't watch a regular season. I'm a big Spurs fan because I love what the Spurs organization does. But, um, you know, finishing strong, you can definitely take a look at uh, the World Series, the Major League Baseball playoffs, and derive a lot of analogies from that. And we look back at where our 2018 is coming to a close. There's basically seven weeks left in 2018. And what's funny is I'm seeing people responding to things. <laughs> Justin Bogart, good morning this morning. Go, go Sox. Good stuff out there. Uh, and then we got Eric Hyde. I'm sorry, buddy. Eric Hyde. My hat is off to Boston. Still Dodger fan, but Boston deserves it. Yeah, Bo uh, Boston really showed up and and, and hammered uh, the the uh, the Dodgers. It'll be interesting what LA does here in a couple of days if Kershaw resigns with them or opts out. But I'm a big big San Francisco Giants fan, so I was rooting for the Red Sox. Just I can't root for the Dodgers. Sorry, Eric Hyde, buddy. Just can't root for him. But anyway, moving on here is we we're in the fourth quarter. We've got basically seven weeks realistically left of the year. Now, well, Scott, there's actually over two months left. October's not even an end yet. Well, you realize you got Thanksgiving, which is basically a dead week. And then you have the last week of your Christmas, which is basically a dead week as well, too. So you take those two weeks away. You have basically seven weeks left in the year for the most part out there. Seven weeks. And so what's funny is I see people out there. I just got an email from a, an investor this morning. It's just one of the worst emails I have seen reaching out for assets. And it's just like, it's, it's just not personable at all. It's it's nothing to like, hey, send me your deals. That's all it said. I got 300 grand. <laughs> send me your deals in the next two weeks. I'm like, that's, that's not an effective marketing piece. And it, I know it wasn't directed at me because it just says, hello. <laughs> So it was a mail merge to asset managers or note investors or things like that. And it was not personalized at all. The guy didn't take any time at all to update um, his email or personalize there, do a mail merge or anything at all. It's very blah plain and it doesn't stand out. Okay. Good morning, Kimberly Ware. Um, so one of the things that I thought we'd discuss is what you should be doing here the last two months of the year, the last really seven weeks of 2018 to, to, to bring home the bacon to make sure that if you're looking to close your first deal of 2018, you get it done, or at least you get on top of some things out there. And here's basically the first thing that I would be doing. First thing I gotta be doing, I would be signing up for note camp. No, <laughs> well, yeah, note camps in three weeks, okay? Um, but what I'm trying to get at is you need more than anything else. You need to be basically reaching out as many note investors or as many asset managers as possible. And one of the big things that we do November 30th through December 2nd is our, our last virtual note buying workshop of the year. We spend the first day on it. So pulling asset managers, whether you're jumping on Lane Guide or you're jumping on um, Distress Pro or you're jumping on the Texas Mortgage Bankers website, downloading those lists, okay, or mortgage and savings lending websites, you have to pull that list and you should start targeting those asset managers. You need to be sending emails out to them I'd almost up it to like once every two weeks now. So once a month, increase it to once every two weeks. Hey, what do you have in your books? What do you have in your books? What do you have in your books? And then I'd also be leveraging that list. Okay, that's the first thing. And leveraging that list by when you send an email out, following up with those 
that open the email as well. Okay. When and sign up those that open the email with another personalized email if you can, or also sign up a second email to those that didn't open the first round. Okay. If you send it in the morning, send it in the afternoon. If you send it in the afternoon, send it in the morning and rotating. But you can do that through Infusionsoft. You can do that through MailChimp. It's one of the most valuable things that you can do with your asset manager list. Because otherwise, if you pull the list of asset managers and you're not marketing them on a regular basis, you're just wasting space. You're just paying for uh, uh, storage on your CRM, basically, with the asset manager list. Okay. Now, one of the things that is important with that aspect, too, is I would also be second thing I'd be doing. Okay. Actually, let me just write this up here so you can see first one. Number one, emailing asset managers. Now, what you want to do with these is you don't, on your email you send out, you want to try to personalize it the best as well. And one of the great things that helps your open rate is if you put the person's first name in the actual subject line, like, hey, Jim, have any nasty, anything nasty in your books? All right. Got anything with any hair on it? All right. Um, I'm I'm looking for this. Or do you, let me help, help me help you. Something simple like that on the subject line that's going to help them be drawn to it a little bit. Okay. You only want to have a few photos on your email if you're using like a CRM like MailChimp or Infusionsoft. I think it's important to put your mug on it, put your smiling, your smiling face on it, your professional face on the side or somewhere where they can start identifying you. Okay. That's an important thing. And then you probably want to have a link to your LinkedIn connections or your LinkedIn profile. That's an important thing because that's then you can go and see, hey, that somebody from a banking institution clicked on your profile or so and so checked out your profile if you have a, a, a paid version of Infusion, uh, not Infusionsoft, paid version of LinkedIn. All right. But that's an important thing is emailing asset managers is one of the most valuable things. So I see people all the time, especially in our WCN crew. Uh, Facebook, uh, private Facebook group, people talking about Joker brokers. There's one guy sitting the same list around now asking for proof of funds and a lot of different intent. And he's asking like 12 different people and people are like, okay, this is stupid. I'm not going to send you a proof of funds letter to a list. I have no, have no idea what you're, you're selling. Okay. Bankers just don't do that. Okay. Asset managers and banks just don't do that. Okay. They may require proof of funds when you submit a contract, but until you have a contract, they're not going to ask for proof of funds. They just don't do that. Okay. So email and asset manager is the first thing. The second thing that I would be doing is, like I said before, is I would be jumping on LinkedIn. Okay. Connecting with asset managers on LinkedIn. Now, what I mean by connecting with asset managers, that means going through connecting with them. But then also sending as you hit connect, copy pasting a short little message. Hey, I just want to see if you had anything in your books at this time of year you're wanting to get rid of. Just looking to see if you got anything, you got any hair on it. This uh, I'm buying from my own portfolio. What do you have available that you may be looking to move? It's a very effective thing. That thing, uh, that specific thing you can do at any time of the day, whether it's your lunch break, whether it's at night, you know, or you're sitting there at the house, you know. Uh, if you're on your phone, you can do this directly from your smartphone, okay? It's very easy enough to do, and it's an effective thing to do as well. I've gotten a hold of many asset managers that, that, that way and just connected with them by communicating. Like this morning, I connected with somebody out of New York. We exchanged a message or two on LinkedIn. Boom, they called me directly. So I had a great conversation with this morning. Yeah. <laughs> they are not Boston Red Sox fans. Let's put that way. <laughs> But anyway, that's the second thing you do. Reaching out first, one, email and asset managers, and follow up with them. Two, connect with asset managers via LinkedIn, all right? Now, the third thing that you should be doing, this is a little bit different, okay? Third thing you can be doing, uh, oh, we got a question here. Uh, it says, says, I am working to close my first deal before the end of the year. Topics. Today's topic is perfectly timed. Thanks. You're welcome, Seth. Now, the third thing that you could be doing as well is it, it, it might be a little bit different out there, but I would also jump on LinkedIn asset manager groups. That's what I would do. Now, what does I mean by this? This is number three. I would go on the LinkedIn, LinkedIn groups where there's distressed mortgage investors, there's distressed asset managers, there's some very 
uh, pretty good sized groups out there that got quite a few people. I would be reaching out to those individuals. You can connect those groups. Those are easy to connect with because you know you're in common with a group and see if they have anything in their books you're looking to get rid of. Okay. Now, you don't want to deal with joker brokers. Okay. All right. Don't deal with joker brokers, but connecting with asset managers on LinkedIn is, is an easy thing to do. And then if you see that they're part of any asset manager groups or you're connected with them there as well, you've got something coming. Hey, see, we're both a part of this group. Want to touch base with you if you have anything on your books. Okay. Uh, Marquita Gaskin says point number two is awesome. Never thought to do that. We'll start doing that today. Thanks. You're welcome. Very simple, everybody. Very simple out there. Uh, connecting to asset management and then looking through the comment section. Okay. Looking down to see who's commented on things. Now, in some cases, um, this is a great way to build your email database too, because you'll see somebody, especially maybe it's an asset manager or another real estate or note investor like us, who goes, hey, I have a portfolio of assets available. And you'll see a bunch of people go on there and you'll say, oh, here's my email, email to me. I just copy paste those things. Oh, you got your first name, last name, and email address. Boom. Or let me go connect with you too. Okay. That adds to your email database out there. Okay. Now, another thing that you should be doing as well, besides jumping on LinkedIn asset manager groups, this is another thing to do as well for those that have some experience. I will be talking, get, getting ready to talk about your year in review. 2018. This is a valuable aspect of it to talk about the deals that you closed this year, the workouts you've done, how many assets you've bought, how much in funding did you do this year? Everybody loves to talk about this. Oh, so and so closed on another quarter million dollars or another five million in loans. You see that happen a lot with private money investors. You see that happen with the hard money investors. You, I, my friend Kristen Gertz, who runs uh, uh, Capricorn Mortgage Investments, she talks about her goals to close on 33 million in notes for the year or for 2017 or 2018, okay? Have a number to help you grow on that aspect of things. Now her numbers are probably a little bit different because she's getting paid off the performing side of things. So she's looking at buying performing. So she figures out a percentage of what she's making, okay? But what you have to do is figure out, okay, I'm going to make at least this percentage mark or percentage point roughly per deal. I can set me a number goal for 2019 but talk about what you closed this year. Send, when you send out your email, hey, just want to follow up with you. It's year end. We've had a very successful 2018. We've closed on this many assets or this much in distressed debt uh, or this much in private funding for our deals. Those are great action item emails that show that you're taking action that can separate yourself from the crowd. Okay. You may even want to create a press release that you could pay 500 bucks for. You're like ereleases.com and, and write up a press release about your business for the year and get that out amongst other things and get those out in financial and business and things like that to get the word out what you're doing and then use that oh hey we were just mentioned in the in the news okay yeah you wrote it up and it got released but you know press release companies or npr or other all these other uh periodicals are looking for articles to fill in on a daily basis you have an opportunity to get your name out in front of several hundred or actually several thousand other entrepreneurs or business owners or investors or readers of those periodicals. So you may want to keep that as an ace in the hole and really strive as you hit some goals to talk about your year interview. It may be a little bit early, but if you've had a good year so far, hey, share that. Hey, just wanted to reach out to see what you've got in your books available this year. We've closed on over $10 million in distress notes this year for our own portfolio. Something simple, okay? And we've got another $5 million to fund before the end of the year is out. You know, those are the big, another big things that I would also uh, talk about. You know, we've done this so far. We've closed on this so far. Here's what we're looking to do before the year is out. Because the fact that you're closing deals separates you from those that haven't closed on deals. And there's no offense to anybody looking to try to close in their first deal. Like, Seth, don't flip out. Oh, my God, I haven't closed any deals. Look, talk about your experience. Talk about other things you're doing. It doesn't have to be a note investing. Maybe I bought... 20 fix and flips, or I bought 20 short sales, or I've done a variety of other things, use that strength to help you identify opportunities or help you separate yourself. Because the fact that you're pulling the trigger, first and foremost, you're pulling the trigger on deals, okay, that separates you from anybody else that there's not pulling the trigger. So don't care if it's your first note deal, your first real estate deal, whatever it is. If you've done some other things, you've bought a house before, bought a rental, done some wholesaling, talk about what you've closed on and you'll be a lot happier and see you'll see a little more action on there one big thing about your marketing 
look at it before you send it out. Have somebody take a look at it, okay? If it looks like shit, it's probably not going to, it's probably going to do shitty, okay? If it looks pretty good, looks professional, great. Just look at, I guarantee everybody is getting, getting bombarded this time of year from other entities, other in institutions looking for you to fund stuff before the year is out, okay? That might be a great email to send out to your at your uh, database too. You know, put your IRA to work. Put your IRA to work before year end. Okay. Put your IRA to work before the year is out. That's what you should do. One of the great things you could do. Okay. I guarantee that'll be helpful for people. Hey, you got some money sitting there burning a hole. Most people want to take action. You know, January, you know, December, January, February, March, the time that a lot of people are looking to make changes. They're looking to update their insurance. They're looking to review their portfolios, their year and stuff. Now's the opportunity for you to put your IRA to work. Okay. Now's the opportunity for you to really get rocking and rolling in your IRAs. Okay. Let's make above average. Let's let me, let me help you make above average. Let me help you take that certificate of disappointment and make it a, cert, a certificate of uh, <laughs> satisfaction from a CD to a CS. <laughs> this begins to realize everybody, those are little things out there that are in people's mind. It's, it's when you start looking, it's why you always see the gym is always occupied come January 1st. People have given up right now because they're not, oh, I'll wait till January 1st. I see that everywhere. I see that in my gym. So I see that here going in, there's only like one or two other people that are in the gym on a regular basis than me because everybody else is flaked off. They've given up. They decided they're going to have a muffin top this year for Christmas. Okay. Oh, I can, I can layer up. It's getting cold. I can put, you know, several layers of clothes on. You're not going to see what, you know, that's what I'm trying to help you guys avoid out there. Now, another thing too, with the market being where it's at is you have to stick to your guns. As I said a minute ago, stick to your guns on the pricing expectations, stick to your guns on what your ROIs need to be. Don't be overpaying for stuff now because there's a, there are some joker brokers out there peddling stuff that just don't make sense. They're they're trying to sell stuff that just doesn't make sense out there. And it's, you know, they're overpriced. They're not in the business. So here's my big thing for you. Avoid the joker brokers. Okay. Avoid joker brokers. Pretty easy to tell. They're asking for LOIs and proof of funds. They're peddling lists that I guarantee have been out for a while. You've seen them before. Just go ahead and block them from your email. Go ahead and unsubscribe from their lists. Okay. They're not going to have anything that makes sense to you in the long run. Okay. They're just not going to do it. They're not going to have anything that makes sense for you at all. Okay. Avoid them. Don't waste your time with their lists. I wish I could rattle off a list here, but that would not be a good thing to do. You need to keep that private. But avoid, you know, if you've got a recycled list that you know has been around for a while, it, it's really easy to see if a spreadsheet has been recycled. Just go to hit to save it and look at the, look over the right-hand side before you save it where it's all the, um, the points of it. Basically, you can see when it's, it was created, who created it, who saw it before that. If you see a spreadsheet has been created longer than six months, it's old, okay? Longer than, you know, 90 days for the most part, because I'll give somebody 90 days on a spreadsheet. That makes sense, okay? Downloading it and working through it, trying to sell stuff off. That makes sense. I can understand that. I'm not going to get too harped on somebody who's got a list that's 90 days or older or less, but when you start seeing stuff that's, this was a year old, I've seen my own stuff come back to me multiple times, all right? I know Laura Blunk mentioned this. She bought, bought some assets and got a list back that some more on there. You have to, it just, it's a funny thing out there that happens. And it's not really funny because you get tired of wasting your time. But this is why it's important to say, take your lists and save them on your desktop somewhere. So you can, if you see an address that sounds familiar, looks familiar, you're not wasting the time and going in there and having to retype, you know, redo due diligence on a list that you've already seen and carved out. Okay. So that's an important feature that I can tell you guys. Just avoid the Joker brokers. If you don't know somebody, Hey, you get a solicited email from somebody out of the blue. Just look at their stuff. Most of their stuff just doesn't look professional because they don't take the time. Joker brokers aren't going to take the time to build a good business because they just aren't. They would rather broker. They're not going to take, they're not really investors. They're just reshoveling shit for the most part. Okay. 
But I will tell you this, the best deals that you're going to see. All right. Uh, what's the hap, Scott? What's up, Mark Hamrock? What I'm going to tell you right now, the best deals that you're going to get between now and the end of the year is going to be direct from the banks, direct from the asset managers themselves. So do yourself a favor. Like I said before, pull your list, send an email out, send it frequently once a week, once every two weeks. You're going to realize there's literally six to seven weeks um, left in the year for you to do something. If you do something great, if you don't do something, wait till the end of the year, you're really only shooting yourself in the foot. So start planning. Start. Don't wait till the beginning of the year to do something. Take action now because this way come the first of the year, you're rocking and rolling and you've got some assets that you're working through that can really help you move some things. Because honestly, the first week of January is pretty much a dead, dead week as well. People are on vacation. People are recovering. They're doing year-end reports. So then at that point, you're really not doing anything until the 14th or 15th of January for the most part. Keep that in mind, okay? Oh, Dan Deppen, good morning, buddy. Uh, most of them, most of the Joker Brokers, them can't even spell. My 10-year-old writes better emails than most Joker Brokers. That's a sure sign they're a Joker Broker. You got somebody on LinkedIn who's pulled a LinkedIn list, exported it, and is trying to just recycle crap out there. They're not really taking any time. So that's the thing to keep in mind. I, I understand People have a few spelling errors. God knows I even have a few spelling errors on my stuff. At least my stuff looks nice. <laughs> At least my images, I take some time to work through to send out and market to on a regular basis. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns from everybody. Thanks for the comments. Good morning, everybody out there. It's hard to believe that October is literally done. We are five, six of the way done through 2018. Where has the year gone? The year has absolutely flown by. I think as the older we get, the faster it flies, right, everybody? Or gives more things that we are working through. It takes, it goes by a lot faster, and we have to be a lot more focused on what we're, we're doing. Otherwise, things are gonna eat up our time as we drift and, and don't focus on things out there. So, questions, comments, concerns from anybody out there? You know, best thing I can tell you this is just follow up, follow up, follow up. Be making it happen and work through your email blast now. If you've never sent an email out to your database, now's the time to be doing it. Everybody, I'm sure this time of year, everybody's getting, especially when you get Thanksgiving, get to Christmas, we all get those letters from our family members about everything else that's going on in their lives, the year in review. You know, take the opportunity to kind of wow. Take the opportunity to send an email out to your database, and that way at Christmas, Thanksgiving time, or Christmas time, you're the talk of the table. Oh, tell me more about what you're doing. <coughs> tell me more about this note thing that you're doing, okay? Um, the little things you can do, to set yourself apart, okay? You know, those those are not difficult emails to write. Hey, here's what we focused on this year. Here's where we've come this year. You know, here's what we're looking to do before the year is out, All right? Those are not difficult things to do. You just have to take the action to do them. If you don't take the action, you don't take the power in, you let it just slide and slide and slide and fade away. Look, nobody's gonna take ownership of that. Nobody's gonna help you get where you need to be until you take action and you take responsibility for where you're at in your life and your businesses and really strive to make it a priority to market. That's what it comes down to more than anything else, everybody. Finding deals and finding funding is all about marketing. That's what it all comes down to. It's all about the Benjamins. It's all about the email blast. It's all about the marketing aspect of things. If you're not marketing, honestly, you're not really in business. Okay. Now, what our plan is here is we've got an email blast that goes out today. Actually, I'm sorry, not today, Tuesday. Goes out end of November or end of October. And we have another follow-up email that's going to go out um, next Tuesday. So one goes out this tomorrow, a follow-up one that goes out Thursday to those that didn't open the one on Tuesday. Next Tuesday, have another email that goes out to those that open the emails. All right. And... Then we also have another follow-up email. One last time, a third email that goes to those that didn't open it. Because usually I get about a 10 to 12% open rate in the first round. A 6 to 8% open rate to those that didn't open it the first time around, the second time I send them. And I'll get somewhere around a 2 to 4%, 2 to 6% response rate on the third time I email them, those that didn't open it. So I'm hitting people three times that didn't open it. Now I'm not sending the same email to those that opened it, because that's just, okay? Um, it's just... I send to those so that I can hopefully hit them in the head and I'll see about a 25, maybe 30% open rate total in total 
with those people added into my list and refresh and everything. Because if anything, this is the time of year everybody's basically looking at their books and looking to see how they can clean up because most of the asset managers are bonused off their portfolio at year end. They're looking to make some deals, and that's why we hit them so hard over the next seven weeks. We'll do that in the next two weeks just alone in the first round and then follow up every two weeks with those that have opened the email. Hey, what do you have in your books? You got anything you're looking to get rid of? Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Same thing. First of uh, first round of December, we'll send another email list to those that, the full, you know, those that didn't open the emails again, just hitting them hard one more time. Okay. Kimberly asked the question, when is the next note camp after this November one? Uh, our next note camp. So we have note camp 6.0 uh, taking place in three weeks. It's going to be November 15th through the 18th. It's online. All our note camp, you can go buy tickets by going to notecamp.live. We've got a, a great lineup of speakers this time around. Probably the best connection um, of educators, professionals in the industry coming together for the three and a half days. Really excited. Uh, should have the schedule done by Monday, uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, pretty stoked about that. But that's November 15th through the 18th. Tickets are... Uh, I think 299 or 399 right now. They do go up here in a couple weeks. So take advantage and get your discounted tickets now before it ends. And then our next live one won't be the next note camp again won't be till April of next year. We only do note camp twice a year. Uh, our virtual note buying for dummies workshop is November 30th through December 2nd. Um, that's our nuts and bolts just on non performing notes, November 30th through December 2nd. And then our next live workshop, I think, is not scheduled until into January. Yeah, into January or February. Okay. Not the exact dates of that yet. Still ironing that stuff out for the most part. Okay. <clears throat> Any comments, questions, concerns? Look, everybody, it's one of the most important things I can tell you right now for those that are watching out here is take action. If you're trying to do something first of the year, start taking action now. If you're, getting, you're wanting to get in better shape, take action now. Get you a two-month head start on things. If you're wanting to start a podcast, get out and film some episodes, record some episodes. Get them launched by the first of the year. There's no greater feeling than being able to say first of the year, basically, if you're doing a podcast or you're making offers or you're you know, going to be an investor, to do something and take action now. Start on your goals now. Don't wait. Quit waiting until the be first of the year. Quit waiting. Quit posting pushing and postponing success when you can start having action today. You have the power of Grayskull <laughs> to take action. We all are our own he-mans and she-mans, okay? We're all the our own masters of the universe, okay? I don't know what to tell you out there. This is a, and I know the holidays are tough for some people with the families and things like that. I get that. But you have the opportunity to really do some amazing things between now and the end of the year. Why not take advantage of it? Most people are sloughing off. This is the time to punch it into overdrive. This is the time to go full court press on your note in real estate business because a lot of people are flaking off because of Halloween, par Halloween parties and you know Thanksgiving and then Christmas parties and Kwanzaa. And, um, you know, those are the things that people are focused on for the most part. You know, that's you, you, you have the opportunity to take advantage of when other people are slacking off. That's the time to attack. That's the time to really make a name for yourself, to really make some things happen. So I really, really hope that you guys do something. I hope you take heed with what we've been sharing with you and make the next seven weeks your most productive seven weeks of 2018. If you have set goals at the beginning of the year and you haven't hit them, that's okay. Everybody does that, but you have an opportunity not to, just to keep striving. Keep pushing forward. Keep taking action. And I guarantee sometimes if you just show up, you'll have things happen. If you'll just show up and keep yourself in the game, amazing things will happen. Okay? It is what it is, everybody. You control your success. I don't. Nobody else controls the type of actions that you do on a daily basis. Only you do. And you are ultimately responsible for the success or lack of success that you're having. It's based on your actions. And so if you've sloughed off and been just lazy, that's okay. Hey, fine. It is what it is. You can't go back and fix it. But what you can do is start taking action today and really making a, a, making 2018 yours before it ends and really pushing that momentum into 2019.
So that's all I've got for you today in this episode of the Closure Show. Seven weeks left in the year. Go make something happen. Go out. Use those three, four things that I told you to do. Not difficult to do. It doesn't cost hardly any money. If any money, your CRM tool, you're going to pay for a premium LinkedIn. You're probably going to find a discount code online. Just do it. Use it. You won't be disappointed, everybody. So go out. Take action. Get some deals closed. And we'll see you at the top.